Hi, so this video is scheduled for 2.30, but I figured I would capitalize on the quiet that I'm getting. Um, Avishai L, certified raw food educator and holistic health coach, helping women get rid of their stress and drop those pounds through nutrition and lifestyle changes without sacrificing their food favorites and authenticity. And today's video is essential oils or medications for stress and anxiety. So there are, I, first of all, I love, love, love essential oils. I've been taking essential oils and I've been on medications my entire life. So who better to share the benefits? <laughs> um, I've seen the horrible, horrible side effects of medications. And I'm not saying medications should not be utilized. You're probably like, what? I mean, they're, certain, they're for a certain purpose. They're not to be taken for certain things. Um, and I'll go into that a little bit further. So many people take, you know, medications for stress. They take medications for anxiety because this is what they were taught. This is what they were told. You take a pill, it will help you. However, medications, many medications do not actually help the the root cause they help the symptoms and then with those symptoms there's also side effects with the medication so what ends up happening is people are on medications for 20 years for depression they're on medications for 20 years for anxiety 20 years for stress and meanwhile they didn't get rid of it no one's getting rid of it they're just treating the symptoms, not figuring out why are you stressed? Have you gone through trauma? Um, is your job causing you stress? Are you stressed because of the food you're eating? Are you stressed because, you know, there's a chemical imbalance? No one's asking these critical, critical questions. And this is why, you know, people are upping their dosage of meds, thinking that something's just wrong with them that, you know, thank you, stress just hits them and anxiety just attacks them and that, you know, they are just an anxious, stressed person. And for a while, that's how I was thinking. I was like, well, I'm just an anxious, you know, stressed person. And I, I was looking for solutions. I actually remember, remember back in school, someone was asking, hey, what can you take before like a violin performance? Like they, this was a legit question. And I came from a world where when people did violin performances, they would take beta blockers. And I told myself, even if I was like, you know, nervous or restless or whatever I felt, I said I refused to take beta blockers because I didn't want something to alter me, alter my state. Even though I didn't know about medications, even though I didn't know about nutrition, I didn't want that. I didn't want the side effects that came with beta blockers. I didn't want any of that. So what ended up happening was, you know, I heard a conversation and um, it just, it, it was almost like that day a seed was planted in my head that there were other alternatives. So I kept that, put it in my pocket and I was like, oh, there's another option. So this girl said, hey, what do you do before performances? And she said, well, I eat a banana and I have chocolate tea. And I was like, hmm, interesting, you know, like it helps, you know, calm the body down, relax you, and it gives you energy. So I was like, hmm, that's amazing. So I started to like implement certain things. Like I did have a banana. Um, I did do certain things, but that was not my solution. I had to get to the root cause for myself as to why I felt, you know, stressed and anxious in various situations and throughout my life. And it was a process. It was a process. And I came to the conclusion that there's just some things in life that I'm just not meant to do. My body was just not reacting healthy to that. Not talking about like violent performances, but anything in life, any, anything in life that felt, you know, you know, made me feel altered or whatever. I was like, no, it makes me feel uneasy. Probably not the right thing to do. So that's what I came to discover, but that's like an aside note. So in terms of essential oils, I discovered essential oils. Actually, my first business when I was in school was essential oils, but they were um, filled with 
synthetics and toxins. I didn't know anything about essential oils. I was just like, oh, this is somewhat natural. You know, instead of the perfume, it was the oil version of the perfume. So that was my essential oil business. And people really, they, they purchased it. They loved it. I would sell it in school. I was like, this is what I want to do for my career. And I did in addition to going to um, college. So I did that. I was ex always exposed to patchouli because my mom always doused me in patchouli. <laughs> and a funny story, actually, as a child, someone reported me to the principal and the principal told everyone they couldn't wear perfume to school. I still smelled like patchouli because it wasn't a perfume. It was an oil. Mom's a hippie. So... I was always exposed to essential oils, but then I think back in 2015, I actually got the knowledge of essential oils and I fell in love with them ever since I utilized them in my life. And as most of you know, you know, I did have past um, addictions and that was because I was trying to think of something that would help me not feel depressed, that would help me not feel anxious, that would help me not feel stressed. And I turned to toxic substances. But once I found essential oils, I was like, wow, I feel balanced. I feel relaxed. And for those of you, it is the best. For those of you who don't know what essential oils are, they are the medicine and the plant. So that's why you smell peppermint. Um, you can smell a peppermint plant. That's the essential oil. And essential oils can be found in the leaves, the stems, the bark, the trees, the flowers. They can be found everywhere. And they are designed to protect the immune system of plants. Okay. They the medicine is used to design is designed to protect the immune system of plants. And in biochemistry terms, we are similar to plants. And what happens with medications is instead of using the whole, they use the whole plant, the essential oil from the plant, and then they put isolated synthetic agents. They are awesome. They put isolated, isolated synthetic agents in that to create a medication. What ends up happening is you get the side effects because you're trying to mix a whole plant with isolated synthetic agents. Can medications be utilized in some cases? Yes, but my first go-to is essential oils because they are the they are natural medicine. They are the earth's medicine. They protect the integrity of the body. They are 50 to 70 times more powerful than herbs. Thank you. Than herbs, and even though herbs should be utilized, you know, whether it's in tea, um, whether it's cannabis, I love, love, love cannabis um, of various varieties. Um, because you have an endocannabinoid system, you know, you, you actually need cannabis just like you need essential oils, but that's another, another video. So oils for can they help with stress and anxiety? Absolutely. Because certain oils, especially the citrus oils, have monoterpenes. Okay, monoterpenes are in citrus oils and citrus oils help uplift your mood. They help boost your mood. Um, it's C, what is it? C10H16 for monoterpenes. That's the chemical compound of that. Okay, these are not like foo foo woo woo you know essential oils whatever they 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 are actually plant medicine and they have real properties and they're designed to boost mood and uplift and promote you know positivity and then you have so your citrus oils your lemon um wild oranges <laughs> i said wild oranges all of those grapefruits um, they are designed to uplift as well as boost immune system and protect your, your overall immunity. And then you have oils that are rich in sesquiterpenes. So the oils that are rich in ses sesquiterpenes and high in sesquiterpenes are the oils that soothe and calm and relax you. And that's your vetiver, cedarwood, um, Frankincense, you know, the very, the woodsy smells. Frankincense has over 65 compounds that help. And they, they are just amazing to use. You want to make sure they're therapeutic grade. I love to put, actually, 
I have um, lime and ginger in my water. So lime, not water, juice. Well, it's made up of mostly water in here, believe it or not, even though it's green. Lime is rich in monoterpene, so it helps boost your mood. So say you're feeling bored or you're feeling stressed, you might want to put, I don't know, lavender and lemon in your water to help balance you out. You see how this works? So can essential oils be used instead of medications? Absolutely. Can they be used in conjunction with medications? You have to check with your doctor because certain medications you can't mix certain oils with. There are certain oils, though, that you can mix. I know the top ones are like peppermint and grapefruit that you can't mix with other medications. But you can start incorporating these into your daily life to helping you feel better, get rid of anxiety, get rid of stress, boost your mood. In addition to your basic nutritional knowledge, comment below if you have any, any questions at all about this, and I'll be glad to help you. I can talk about um, essential oils and medications all day. I love the science of essential oils and how they are high, so high, high frequency. I'm getting a visual of um, a lot of you are still worrying. Thank you. A lot of you are still worrying and you're being asked to find your strength in all of this and start to take responsibility and accountability for how you're actually feeling. And um, you're welcome. Not be, you know, dependent. You really got to be independent because you're manifesting this. You're really manifesting this. I'm seeing a visual. Certain you're manifesting. You're going to start manifesting your fears. Take accountability. Start implementing Start implementing stuff. Yes, what happened to you maybe wasn't fair. Yes, the situation that is occurring, maybe you don't think it's fair, but it's all in your perspective. It's how you're looking at it. If I'm looking down, it's because I'm seeing a visual right now. It's how you're looking at it. It's time to take your power back, empower yourself, and take control of your life. I had to take control of my life. You know, a lot of shit has happened to me. A lot. I shouldn't even be here for half the shit that has happened. But you know what? I took control of my life. I said, you know what? The best thing I could give myself is peace. I can't live like this anymore. I can't live depressed anymore. I can't live stressed anymore. I'm sick of having anxiety. I'm sick of I'm sick and tired of, you know, feeling un, uh, uncomfortable and feeling uneasy. So I had to say hell fucking no to certain things and really change my life. What are you saying yes to that you can easily say no to? And if you need my help, like I said, drop a comment below and I can help you with that. I have a whole blueprint. I have a whole method <laughs> that helps people with that and, and develop self-empowerment and self-love and those boundaries that you need to set, okay? But use essential oils in addition to that so it can balance you out. So you can think clearly because that's what it's meant to do. But I keep seeing this visual of worry and angst. And that's unfortunately what you're going to manifest. Change that mindset. Start writing down what you're feeling and take steps. It's time. I'm telling you, it's time. You don't want to be caught up in, in um, you don't want to get caught up in that because there are, you know, it's not good consequences when you're manifesting that. Your minds are very powerful. What you're putting in your heart, what you're putting in your gut, what you're putting in your um, brain, protect that, protect that, okay? Have a wonderful day.